Okay. I want to preface this by saying I am a trained sociologist, and the studies that people individually um, try to conduct, you are not qualified to do this. And even as a qualified person, I would not do it the way that you're doing it, nor would I feel comfortable doing it. Okay, like there are so many precautions you need to take when you play sociologist, which is what the general public tries to do and fails at. And that's why you consistently get confusing results or inaccurate results that you squeeze into an agenda. So let it be known you guys are not qualified to do this. So stop trying to do this. And this is to everyone. Okay, not just one party. But I do want to talk actually about Shiloh Church. I'm just going to spit it out because... Let's just talk. Uh, this is this is why, and I keep wanting to go to church. I keep wanting to go to church. I keep wanting to go to church, and I keep not doing it because I am so afraid of the way that people can be misguided. And it's not that people are trying to be bad. It's that the devil works in very uh, tricky ways. And they can take the most riot, righteous or pious or even good people um, and twist reality to where they think that they are being good in their judgments when they're actually judging something wrong. And I admire the way that some members um, are trying to put their judgments aside and see the truth, but that is not true for all members. Now you do what you want to do, but considering I'm the talk of the town, let me talk for a second since I am the one in question. I went to Shiloh Church, okay? I happened to meet Gail and Jesse first. Gail has a history of being very defensive of Jesse and scaring off women when it's not really the women that are in flirtation or whatever you want to call it. Um, it that, that's It's not really their fault. Gail is just defensive and, and gets scared and tells women to fuck off and and get away from, from her man. Okay? That's her history. That was long established before I ever got there. So that's first. So, and I did see good in Gail. I saw a lot of good in Gail. I even saw that she was fucking without Gail. I wouldn't have had, uh, my, my morning sickness was absolutely horrendous. And without Gail, I would have been puking for much longer. So she basically like vastly improved the quality of my pregnancy on that. I wasn't puking on the side of the road all the time. So I'm grateful for Gail. However, you know, it was a bit extreme on, on your end. Um, but she's not evil. Okay. She just insecure. <laughs> okay. So, and I saw that, that she's not trying to be evil. She just <laughs> has a history, but you also have to keep in mind that, um, I have a horrific reputation. These people don't know me from Adam, you know, or Eve as it may be <laughs> correct. Um, and so th they get really defensive of outsiders or people that threaten their relationships. And they viewed me as someone that could be a potential threat to their lifestyle, their faith, blah, 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 all operating off of this aw awful, basically satanically skewed reputation. Sharla once said to me, Maybe you're like an angel that was sent here to test us. I really liked the way that your mind thought for a while. Because you were way closer on that end than the way that it got skewed, unfortunately. And the only blame that I can really assign them is you need to listen to God. I'm, I'm being instructed to do the same, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but you need to listen to God better. Pray on it. If your faith really is that strong, that you could have almost an omnipotent power in order to be able to judge me, you better make sure that that's true. And I don't doubt that some of you have very, very, very strong faith and a very, very strong connection. I felt God within those walls. That's why I was weeping when you guys were and weren't there. Like weeping all the time in that prayer room because the presence of God is very strong. The spirit is there. But people are people, and judgments are judgments, and this can be divisive from God. So let me kind of explain some things. Um, I didn't trust that there weren't video cameras 
I didn't trust that video cameras weren't wouldn't be used against me. I didn't trust that my personal information might not be leaked to the public or made for uh, public scrutiny. And I believe that that's true. I believe that all those things happen within the church and within its members. And some people are trying to get to the truth, but you are not qualified to do this. This is called covert sociology, and it's a complicated process. It is not nearly as easy as you think it is. If we'll get to the truth by testing it this way, and if the results come this way, it's far more complicated than that. And so I was tested many times by its members who wanted to see, well, if I give her food, will she take it? on the first, because the first stint that I went there was pretty random, and I trusted the church to be not poisoning all of its members to get to me, I ate openly. And on the next one, um, I didn't really want to, but this had more to do with cameras. If you were to see that I was inconsistent, that would be the problem, and I no longer trusted that the church would not be bugged by somebody who's curious, who wants to play detective. So, I declined. And um, when it came to individuals, there were a few times that I trust them initially on what seemed like semi-random things to not poison me and my child, okay? But then backed off and said, but in the case that there's cameras, I better get consistent here. Plus, I was really hungry and poor at the time. I had no means to myself. So, do you want to eat today? I was out of food stamps when I first got there, remember? Because I fed the hefty family back in Ferndale. Yeah, so I had nothing, okay? There weren't really that many other options. So, you know, I kept getting kind of, people kept kind of testing, like, well, if I went and I took her to this restaurant, would she eat there? And then, you know, this is like gossip. This is like a tune for gossip. And then that means, if I did, that means that it's not consistent and I'm like anorexic or a drug addict or shallow or whatever the thing is, when really it's, I trusted them all initially to not, um, poison me. Why? Because I don't think the random population would just do that at a church when I'm pregnant. However, people corrupt over time and people put cameras over time for whatever reason that they're, I'm not, I'm on this side of it. So I don't know if you're required to do this. I don't know. Or if you just want to do this on your own volition, or if the government is telling you to do this, or if uh, the enemy is telling you this, I don't know. I'm ignorant to all this. So for me, I assume eventually I am video cameraed everywhere that I go into habitually. So this is why when like, for example, Charlotte came and drove down and accidentally ran into me and Ukiah and said, hey, are you hungry? Do you want me to go buy you food? I accepted. Why? Because I don't think Sharla is go going to take me and my child to go eat poison now. No, not really. And I was really hungry. And then that's the last I ever saw from her. I guess the case was closed. Right. But you're not a sociologist. You're not a sociologist. You don't know why I did it, nor did you ask me. So assumption, piggybacked off assumption, piggybacked off of assumption. And then I believe that they're infiltrators. There was a guy who came in that his family hadn't ever set foot in that church for 20 years, but they were sure to basically read from a script about how I'm a drug addict, therefore I'm an expert on all things drug related. And um, look at all the things that my family did in this church. I'm surely have an authority here, though I haven't stepped foot in here for 20 years and I'm showing up out of the woodwork all of a sudden. I'm guessing those people don't still attend there, right? Probably went in for a couple months, looked like they were a part of it and then ducked out with some excuse. Correct. <laughs> And I see this from a mile out and go, oh, fuck, you got to leave. And I do was really sad to leave this church because the presence of God was there. The interpretation of people and the judgment and the defensiveness toward me was also there. But that's just their fear. And that's because if I had walked in as a stranger with no reputation, they probably wouldn't have been like that. But between the gossip and the, the poor sociology and the infiltrators that I believe in. I could be wrong and I apologize if I am wrong, but my interpretation of what seemed like was going to be an obvious infiltrator coming in, decisions were made that I was not worthy, lest we be judge. And the truth is, if you pray on it, if you watch these tapes, look for, go ahead, any signs of insincerity, go ahead. No, really. And I want you to see my arms crossed. Why? Because go ahead. Pray on it. Pray on it. 
I welcome you. If, if I'm going to continue to be a talk, you know, behind the scenes, um, then why don't you pray on it? I'm not mad at you, Shiloh. I see how things get misinterpreted. I'm just disappointed and I am hurt. And it, it does hurt more when it comes from people that are closer to God. Not so much because of you, but because it is so sad when you see good accidentally corrupted by evil. And it's and that is like a, more of a tragedy to me than the secular world getting misguided because it's like, this is a place of God. These acts of lies or assumptions or evil or whatever you want to call it in the house of God among God's people is like it's blasphemy, and uh, and that's why it hurts. So it's not you guys. You're fine. You're busy in your lives, and, and very few people bothered to even try to get to the bottom of it, and some of them did, and that's why I have reverence for them. Um, but a lot of them didn't and decided that I was bad because they heard me say this and that, or, or maybe I thought, oh, and they watched very closely. But the thing is, it, look, that that is judgment. You don't do that to each other. If I had just been a stranger that came in and you had no idea my reputation, you wouldn't be psychoanalyzing every little thing for like the suspicion that maybe the way that you don't want to help can be justified. Okay, and some of you heard God louder than the rest of you. It may be that their connection might be stronger. I don't know. Or maybe it was their calling to be a part of it and it wasn't yours. I don't know. I'm not omnipotent, but all I know is that you guys have operated under false assumption. That much I can say. Why? Because I'm me. I wasn't doing any drugs and I didn't have any sex in Willits. So you're wrong, you know, and I knew my intentions and in going there were just, that's where I was supposed to be. God bless.